Hey Piro, uh, I just made a video response about 15 minutes ago, direct uploaded, and it didn't upload. That kind of sucks. Um, but I wanted to thank you for bringing up this interesting topic because it's something I think a lot about. Um, the idea, though, that DNA has any needs um, may be mistaken. I mean, obviously, it's just a metaphor, and even Richard Dawkins admits that his selfish gene. Uh, theory is itself a metaphor because strictly speaking the genes don't have any intentions whether selfish or altruistic um, they are just molecular replicators that happen to be involved in the way organisms are structured um, now Darwin had this idea that um, the most competition between organisms occurs within species because each species is um, you know peculiarly adapted to a specific niche and if there are many organisms of the same species competing for the same niche um, the amount of selection which will occur um, based on which organism has the advantage um, in attaining the resources they need in that particular niche um, is going to beat out the others. Um, but I think what this neglects is that in, um, well, at least in mammals, mammals seem to develop um, social relationships with others of the same species, such that it doesn't seem to hold true that competition is greatest within species. Um, this may be the case for organisms with less developed nervous systems, or with no nervous systems whatsoever, but the more the nervous system develops, the more the ability um, of communication is enhanced, and at the level of, um, you know, mammals, primates, human beings, certainly, there's group selection, I would say. In other words, um, evolution at the level of the species, rather than just the level of the organism or the level of the gene if we're extremely reductionistic like Dawkins. Um, you know, and the idea that genes have needs then is, uh, is I don't know if it's a, a useful way of looking at this. Um, organisms have needs. Species, communities have needs. The biosphere has needs. Um, but if we're looking at life in terms of the molecules that give rise to its structure, we will find no teleology whatsoever. Um, the thing is, though, DNA is about structure, but there's another level of description that I think is necessary to understand biology in any coherent sense, and that is the organization of the structure. And, you know, you mentioned this at the beginning, that DNA... Uh, by DNA, you mean more than just these static, um, you know, crystals or molecules. You mean the ongoing activity of what these molecules are engaged in, um, and that would be the organization. But the organization transcends just the molecules. The organization makes the molecules of DNA what they are. Uh, in other words, what we, you know, refer to metaphorically as the information contained in the genome is actually an emergent property of um, those nucleic acids interacting within a cellular matrix um, you know the way proteins happen to fold because of certain you know physical proclivities has nothing to do with the supposed information in the gene it's just a happy accident of physics and um, genes in and of themselves, they, they don't replicate themselves. They replicate because of um, the cellular matrix. And uh, these things are connected. And I think it's silly to reduce all of life to genes. Um, you know, it's sort, it, it kind of gives... Um, uh, the materialist reductionistic scientist a bit of a, a head rush because they think oh wow we found the underlying causal mechanism that explains life uh, so it you know it's a sense of power and uh, 
uh, pride almost associated with, with such a discovery, but I think ultimately that's more hubris than it is science, because to my mind, science is about useful descriptions. I think you would agree, Piro. Um, science doesn't explain anything. Um, it offers useful descriptions, allows us to predict how uh, certain things will behave in the future, um, probabilistically, and we can never be certain. Um, you know, the fact that we are understanding more and more about evolution doesn't, at least for me, get rid of any, uh, any of my sense of wonder and astonishment that this amazing process actually occurred. You know, it's not as though because we gain insight into the underlying mechanisms that somehow it becomes a mere, uh, you know, material accident. No, it's still uh, amazing to me. Um, so, I guess, strictly speaking, DNA doesn't communicate any needs to the organism. Um, needs arise only, you know, uh, in relationship to the whole organism. The DNA as a molecule doesn't have any telos, no purpose, no goal. Uh, but of course, abstracting in such a, an extreme way to say that the DNA somehow exists separately from the organism and the environment uh, and from the shared interaction between organisms, um, I think that's uh, misguided because the DNA itself um, doesn't contain any information in a vacuum. You know, the information comes out of its relationships with its surroundings, with the matrix, the intracellular matrix, with uh, the morphology of the body, with, um, you know, the environment and habitat within which the organism is situated and so on. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I don't think I covered everything I said in my first video, but uh, such is life, I guess. It's lost in cyberspace, so... Uh, thanks for your video, thanks for bringing up these interesting topics, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to talk about this stuff more, because I really, uh, I'm interested in, in this more than anything, in, uh, in biology, because to my mind, biology, the life sciences, provide better metaphors, better descriptions for not only what goes on on Earth, but what the entire cosmos or universe is doing. Um, not that life isn't physical, um, but it's physics at such a complex uh, level of organization that it is able to observe itself, matter observing and understanding itself. Um, and so when we try to study the physical world, we're always doing it through this biological organism, through its perceptual limits we could say but you know I don't see them as limits because these senses and all the peculiar things that they allow us to experience about the universe um, well you know that's just it they allow us to experience the universe and whether or not we experience it as it objectively exists independently of us I don't think is important we are we are limited for better or worse to our biology um, when we're studying the objective physical makeup of the universe. So being that we're always seeing through that lens, it seems to me that the life sciences provide better metaphors or frames of reference um, for understanding the universe as a whole. Um, so thanks for listening. Hopefully this one uploads. If it doesn't, that sucks. Take it easy.